Welcome to my channel. I am going to walk you through the process of valuing three gold stocks and analyzing their ratios. Comment if you have questions. I respond to every comment. Subscribe if you want to see me value more companies. The first gold stock is Anglo Gold. This company is the world's third largest producer of gold behind Barrick and Newmont. Let's get started with the model. They have a market cap of $12.1 billion, so they're a large cap company. They're trading at a little over $29 a share. And to get the shares outstanding, you take the market cap over the stock price. That gives you the shares outstanding, $415 million. We're going to need this number for later when we calculate the value of the company. Let's look at their financials. They have positive, consistent, free cash flow each year, so that's good. They're generating more cash than they're spending. So in two years, they had negative net income. It could have been some non-cash items they passed through, like depreciation, that brought down their net income. Their revenue looks okay, although it seems to be declining. It's lower in 2019 than 2016. Let's look at the capital structure. They have $2 billion of debt. The interest rate they pay in a debt is 6.35%. Cost of debt is 3.8%. The way you calculate cost of debt, it's the interest rate times one minus the effective tax rate. And 44% of the capital structure is debt, which means 56% of its equity. And to get the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. They have a low beta, 0.19, as most gold stocks do. So the stock moves much less than the market. The weighted average cost of capital is 3.78%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. This is the first time I've seen the cost of debt equal to the cost of equity. That's pretty ironic, but they're not exactly equal. If I bring it out one more decimal point, you could see they're a little different. So this is the discount rate, 3.78%, that we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 15.5 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $14.5 billion. We divide that by 415 million shares, and we get a calculated stock price of $35. They're trading at $29, so they're trading at a 16% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street says. They're saying the stock is worth $25, so they're saying the stock is overvalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So it looks like it's been driven up the price during coronavirus, and it's almost at its all-time high. Its all-time high was about a month ago. Let's look at the financial ratios. Negative PE, a week price of sales, and a week price to book. PE is stock price of earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They have negative net income, so they have negative PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 3.4, so investors are paying $3.40 for $1 revenue. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 4.6. So investors are paying $4.60 for $1 book value. They have a good current ratio, good interest coverage ratio, and a bad ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2, they're at 1.4. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income, so they have a negative ROE. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense, so they can easily cover their interest payments. I like to see above 2.0 for this category. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Barrick, Kinross, Kirkland, Newmont, Oceana, and Grand Columbia. All in the same industry as Anglo Gold. If Anglo has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So PE, of course they're worse because they're negative. Price of sales, they're better than the average. Price to book, they're worse than the average. Current ratio, they're worse than the average. ROE, they are better than the average at 0% because the average is negative 5%. In terms of debt, they're about twice as much as the average. 23% is average, they're at 44. And market cap, they're a little below the average at 12.1 billion. The average is 20 billion. 
Dividend yield, they're at 0.32%, which is lower than the average of 0.95%. To sum things up, I value them at a 16% discount, but the ratios aren't so great. The second gold stock is Kinross Gold. This is a Canadian gold and silver mining company founded in 1993. It currently operates eight gold mines. The mines are located in Brazil, Ghana, Russia, and the US. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $11.1 billion, so they're a large cap company. They're trading at $8.91 a share. Their free cash flow is positive three out of four years. They have negative net income in two of the four years, so their financials are a little rocky. And their revenue is pretty steady at about $3.5 billion. They have $1.8 billion of debt. They pay 4.2% interest on their debt. So the cost of debt is 3.1%. They have 26% debt in that capital structure, 74% equity. To get the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is. And their beta is 1.41. So the stock moves about one and a half times the market. It's a pretty high beta for a gold company. Their WAC is 10.5%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimate a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's 8.3 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company at $6.9 billion. We divide that by 1.2 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 555. They're trading at 891, so they're trading at a 61% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them at $24, so they're saying the stock is undervalued. They're saying it's a buy. Let's see where the stock has been trading the past few years. Similar to the last company, the price has been driven up. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a good PE, a decent price of sales, and a good price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15. There are 15.4. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, there are 3.2. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, there are 2.1. Current ratio is good, interest card ratio is good, and a weak ROA. So current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can easily cover their current debts and payables. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%, there are 14%. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2%, there are 12 and a half, so they can easily cover their interest payments. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on Anglo Gold, Barrick, Kirkland, Newmont, Oceana, and Grand Columbia. Ken Ross is right here, and if they have a number in green, they're better than the average. If they're in red, they're worse than the average. So it looks like they're better than the average in most categories in PE, price of sales, price to book, they have the highest current ratio of all the companies. ROE, they're better than the average. They're a little worse than the average in debt at 26%, average is 23%. And they're a bit lower in market cap at 11 billion, average is 20 billion. They don't pay any dividends. The average of the companies who pay dividends is 0.95%. To summarize, I value them at a 61% premium, a sell, but their ratios look pretty good. The third and last gold company is Grand Columbia, which is a Canadian-based gold producer with its main focus in Colombia. Let's get started with the model. This is a really small company, 314 million market cap. They're trading at $4.98 a share, so it's a penny stock. They do have positive free cash flow that's growing each year, so that's good. Their net income is negative two of the four years, and their revenue seems to be growing each year, so the financials look pretty decent. They have $90 million of debt. They do pay a high interest rate of 9%. And the weight of debt is 43%, which means 57% of the capital structure is equity. To get the cost of equity, we need the beta. That's how volatile the stock is. They have a pretty high beta, 1.72. So the stock moves a little less than two times the market. And to get the weighted average cost of capital, 12.7%, that's a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's 205 million. 
We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company at $296 million. We divide that by 63 million shares. We get a calculated stock price at 469. They're trading at 498. So they're trading at a 6% premium. So it is a sell according to the model, but it's pretty close. Simply Wall Street has them value at 66 cents. So they're saying the stock is worth almost nothing. Let's see where the stock has been trading at for the past few years. So it looks like it was sitting around $2 for a while, but the price has come up quite a bit. I couldn't value this company using my traditional model, so I had to use my alternative model, which I built for Tesla. That looks at the free cash flow growth over the past three years and extrapolates that out 30 years. Let's look at the financial ratios. Negative PE, great price to sales, great price to book. PE is stock price over earnings per share. They have negative earnings, so they have negative PE. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 1.0. That's a really good ratio. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 2.7. They have a good current ratio, a good interest card ratio, and a bad ROE. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities, so they can cover their current debts and payables. ROE is net income over equity. They have negative net income, so they have negative ROE. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0, they're at 13.3, so they can easily cover their interest payments. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Anglo Gold, Barrick, Kinross, Kirkland, Newmont, and Oceana. And Grand Columbia is at the end. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they're in green, they're better than the average. So PE, they're worse because they're negative. They do have the best price to sales ratio of all the companies at 1.0. They're better in price to book. They're worse in every other category, current ratio, ROE, they're higher in debt, and they're by far the smallest company at 314 million market cap. They do pay a dividend similar to the average in the industry. To summarize things, I have them trading at about intrinsic value, but their ratios look pretty weak except for their price to sales and price to book. Let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I answer all comments. If you want to see me value more companies, then subscribe. Thanks for watching.